Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of our software testing bootcamp where we are talking about the fundamental concepts of software testing. And we are in chapter five uh, where we are looking forward to understand more about the test management and continuing ahead with 5.3 which is defect management. As a part of today's tutorial, we'll be stepping into understanding the need and the simplicity of the defect report. At this point, we'll be trying to understand what exactly defect report is all about and what we should have it in the defect report. In order to get started, the very first thing here, we are talking about the objective of writing a defect report, given that a lot of people may think that when a tester is pretty much aware of what exactly is the issue, he or she may anyhow can explain another person like developer that what exactly is the issue and how to fix it. So why should we look forward to write a defect report? Now the need is, of course, not everything can be virtually explained. There are no such process where a documentation can be replaced to a certain extent, right? Now, number one point here to talk about the objective is to make sure that we document everything which happened at that particular moment when a tester was trying to execute a test and that failed. Now, it's just not limited to writing a summary, writing a severity or capturing a status and environment detail. It is also including a quick screenshot, the test cases, the test data which you were executing, or what exactly was the other set of activities which was happening in parallel when you were trying to execute them, right? So capturing a defect report is just not limited to some basic information, but at the same time gives all the details required for a counterpart, that is your stakeholder, like developer, to understand that what exactly a tester did in order to get that issue. At the same time, these further details would help a developer reproduce a defect to understand that how it could happen and also find all necessary information to resolve the issue. On the other hand, it also provides a test manager a means of tracking the quality of the work product and the impact on the testing. Now that certainly helps at any point of time that for example, a defect is coming in code a lot. Then we pretty much know that the code is being written is not of that the great quality, which it should be. Now problem is when we capture the information, it certainly determines that where is the problem? Where did we get the issue? Where did we get the uh, defect? Now, not only dynamic testing, defect management is pretty much related to static testing too. Now, static testing, we review the work product, so any work products having a lot of defects can let us know that, hey, this type of documentation needs more improvement, right? Not only that, if we talk further on top of it, the point number three says it provides ideas for development and the test process improvement. Now, development certainly lets us know that at points where we know where we are getting a lot of defects from which particular corner of the application, what kind of developer was working on it. And we can look forward to understand that whether the developer is skilled to perform those necessary actions to build that application or not, because we have been getting a lot of defects every time we test an application or piece of code from a particular developer. Or sometime when it comes to a particular functionality could be also related to the same thing that whenever we come to this functionality, we have a lot of issues and this could build us to understand that we have a principle called as defect clustering so we can improvise further. Not only that, the test improvement process can also be optimized given that how your test cases are helping you to find defects. What kind of executions, what kind of levels are more beneficial in getting a lot of quality defects rather than just getting a past status, right? So from the defect report, you can pretty much get to know about your process abilities, right? At what point you need to improve them or what are the challenges, loopholes in your process which needs improvement further. On top of it, let's understand what exactly should I include to call it as a decent defect report. Now, here we are talking about a typical list of items which you can include as an information of a defect and we put them together to call it as defect report. Now, this is again a typical list team uh, when it comes to your organization, when it comes to your product, when it comes to your domain, you may have different other fields too to capture the information relevant to your particular 
practices. Not only that, if you're following any kind of standards like ISO or any of those specific IEEE or uh, USPS standards, then you may be driven by them to capture some specific necessary informations in your defect report. The information what we have taken here is from IEEE 829, which is a worldwide standard for maintaining test work products. But again, as I'm saying, this is just a typical list of the items which you can capture. You can look forward to add more to it, depending on your product, depending on your organization, and depending on any other standards which you're following at the organization level. Now, let's have a look what exactly we are talking about, including in our defect report. Number one, an unique identifier. That means a ID which would uniquely identify each defect being different from other. On the other hand, a title and short summary of the defect being reported, which certainly means that what kind of, uh, what, what is the defect and when it was reported, including the title and short summary to identify the details of the defect. Uh, date of defect report issuing organization and author. Now date is of course very important to keep uh, understanding on how long it is taking to resolve each and every defect. Issuing organization, that means who found this defect. It's not necessary only testing team is responsible for finding defects team. You can also look forward to have this responsibility being shared with other stakeholders too. An author is the person who has found this defect. That means a tester name, if the tester has reported this issue, should be here. The only reason why author looks a little casual here is to tell you that whom should I reach out to understand more about this defect if I have any questions? Now that's obviously I need the person name who reported this. Identification of the test item which you were testing and the environment which you were organizing in because sometimes it's possible that a particular environment like dev environment may not have this defect, but the test environment may have the defect. A development lifecycle phase where you actually found this, that means it could be unit testing, could be integration testing, or it could be like design development. So which phase did you identify this defect? Please capture that. A description of the defect which would be more detailed about what exactly do you think is the issue and how did you exactly get them. Expected an actual result, which you will say that, hey, as per the behavior, as per the requirement, the expectation was so and so, and actually it is behaving like this, which would be a quick comparison for a developer to understand what's this defect and the deviation. Scope and degree of impact, which simply means the severity, which is defined by your test engineer in terms of determining that what could be the impact of having this defect in our environment, on the functionality, on the user, however, but you will define a severity to it so that a developer can look into it critically and understand. Now again, severity could be at different uh, levels, uh, depending on the organization. Some of the organizations prefer to use S1, S2, S3, or some organizations prefer using high, medium, low. So it's just that what is more critical, you give them high and less critical items are low. Sometimes people even use critical, major, minor. Adding further to it, uh, we have priority to fix. And again, priority is more about understanding that when you give similar severity level defects to the developer, a developer sequences your severity level defects with priority, stating that if I have three defects reported with the same severity level like high, then developers gives a priority to any one of them right? Because all three defects cannot be fixed at a time. So how do you expect them to come back from the developer is the priority. So pro developers will define the priority to fix. Sometimes they can sync with you on triage call to determine what could be the priority. State of the defect at any point of time, you have just covered in our previous tutorial, what are the different status. So at time to time, you will capture the required uh, status for the same. Once result, conclusion, recommendations, and approvals, because not every single defect is fixed just because it is a defect. Sometimes you need necessary approvals to fix the defect and the conclusion and recommendations to uh, look forward uh, in terms of like what exactly was done to resolve the issue. Global issues, which means any sort of side effects which may happen due to fixing of this defect, which would help the test team to perform the necessary regression test post to this defect is closed. Change history if in case at any point of time the defect was optimized with the information 
like initially you gave some information but at this point the information has been updated then the change history the version control has to be managed and finally anything else which supports understanding what is the defect all about is also supposed to be attached or linked to this particular defect report including your test case talking about screenshots if you have a video recording of the screen which helps people understand what exactly the defect is anything which can support help understand this defect more better you would include them in the report well that's all from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'm always there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning